Hey there folks and welcome back to the channel. I'm really sorry that I haven't posted a video in such a long time. I am working and I can't really post anything. <clears throat> but um, several, many months ago, I posted a video on the truck engine progress. Now, a really good guy, Carrie, who I'll link in a description below to his YouTube channel. It's Vintage Iron 7512. And this guy really knows what he's doing. So if you want to see the full videos, go down to his link and look for the FE engine builds. But um, there's a couple hours of video that he's posted that I'm going to edit down to something that's relevant to my channel which is just, you know, getting the motor back and his expertise on the work. Um, it's amazing stuff, but if you're a motorhead and you really want to see everything, go to his channel. Um, of course, after you watch my version. Anyway, take care, enjoy the video, and uh, I'll talk to you all here in a bit. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. Hi, welcome back everybody. So today we've got the, we're going to start our, our journey on the 390 stroker build. So I want to talk to you a little bit about this block before we get started. The, um, the customer's original block was cracked. We magnafluxed it. You probably saw that in an earlier episode. So we, we picked up this uh, 390 block that was, um, we got it for my gentleman up north. I, I checked the block out and magnafluxed it and it, it turned out to be a good block. It actually had, he had already had a machine shop bore it and so I checked the cylinders for the bore gauge and everything turned out really nice. They did a really nice job on this block. So this is a really good builder. It's a good candidate. It doesn't look like it has a lot of core shift or anything like that. But before we get started, um, I, I looked on YouTube for 390 FE builds just because I wanted to see what was out there. And man, there's, I mean, there's some, there's, there's some stuff on there that's pretty good, but mainly what you're going to find is that basically it's just a bunch of slideshows with music playing. Right, and then subtitles across. Hey, you know, we did this, we did that. So, I want to actually make an FE series build that's thorough and complete. What we're going to do is we're going to take our straight edge and we're going to lay it in the main bore. Then you take your feeler gauges and you take your smallest feeler gauge. In this case, it's going to be one thousandths. A really good main bore. We have no misalignment issues. The bores have to be perfectly aligned. When they bore this block down here, they, they do what they call a line boring. They fit the caps onto it and then they take a long boring bar and they bore these out and they make these main bores in a perfect alignment with each other. But what I'm noticing here is the bores are the correct size and we have consistency all the way around and this block is in pristine condition it's all well within specifications and so we got a really good candidate we're using uh, a molly forged piston for this build it's a dish piston um, these are really good uh, quality pistons that we've chosen for this build and it is a stroker piston because we're building and putting the stroker crank in now we have a reading that we can use to set our bore gauge up is I have about five thousandths clearance exactly where we are so this this thing is really good really good and of course we've thoroughly checked these out and these bores are really good inside our clearance is exactly where it needs to be these are things that can't be overlooked you guys you've got to check this stuff this block is in very excellent condition there's some more checks that we need to do but before we do that, um, we're going to have to pre-assemble this thing and do some other, other checks as well. This is a, a truck engine that we're doing for Michael, and it's not really going to see a lot of really high RPMs. 
the pump mounts here. This is my oil pump mounting bracket. And then there's a hole here. This hole is tiny. What we do on this is you want to take a 5 8 drill bit. Or you can use a Dremel, but I like to take a 5 8 drill bit and I just want to kind of open that up. Now you can't really open it up too, too much. You can't go, you know, obviously all the way through because there's a 90 degree turn here. So we're going to open up the top side of this hole, right? And then you have to take a, a very fine Dremel and you have to kind of port that. You're going to drill up here with your 7 16 drill bit. And what that does, this is a really common mod for the FE. I mean, we, the, the, every FE I've ever done, I've done this to it. Yeah. This engine is not going to see that kind of RPM. Uh, the camshaft that's going in it is, is you know, it's, it's pretty mild. It is a hydraulic roller, but it's, it's designed, we're, we're basically building a truck engine here that we want to get a lot of torque and performance out of. For some reason, they're like this. Now, we need to kind of correct that because you got a big mismatch there. So what we do, and you can even see where the imprint of the old bearing was. You can kind of see on this one where that hole was right there. So it's a big mismatch. So that's another thing we're going to do. In addition to opening up the oil, oil flow from the pump, we want to take and come in here with a Dremel tool and we want to relieve that. So we drilled a hole right here into the, into the timing cover area because there's nothing there, there's no water jacket or anything here. This was just solid. So we drilled a hole and then we took a Dremel and we opened that hole up because we want the oil that's in the lifter valley here, we want it to drain out. We opened up these oil drains back here too and tried to lower the level so that the, the, the oil would drain better. Because We took and we opened this up here and we kind of took a Dremel in here and we went down to the level of the oil here so that the oil could drain out and it doesn't build up so, in here. And we also opened this hole up and lowered it so that the oil could drain down here uh, easier. So that, We went ahead and took a Dremel in there and we kind of smoothed that out and ported that thing and opened it up and now we have a much larger hole here that actually matches. We don't have this big mismatch with our pump. Another thing we did here is we drilled out the front oil gallery hole. Now we've gotten that oil gallery hole to really match the hole in the bearing and that, that's, that's a, really, a really good upgrade. It's something that really just helps the thing oil better. Took a while to do it, you know, you, with the with the Dremel. Uh, you just got to take your time and drill that stuff out. And a very fine sand cone, and we polished these and made sure that they were all deep burred and so forth. So if we put the crankshaft in, and then we put a piston in each corner, and we check our deck height, that's going to tell us if this deck is square to the center line of the crank or not. If it's not square to the center line of the crank, we're going to have to set it up and deck it. And one thing we don't want to do is when we put our bearings in here, even, even just to pre-assemble it for the first time, it's not our final assembly, we don't really want any grit or anything like that uh, getting in the bearings of the crankshaft. So we're going to clean this thing up and lay the crank and then we'll start taking our deck measurements. This is our crankshaft that we got back from the balance shop. It's a, it's a really nice unit. Um, you can see what's interesting here is they actually pressed heavy metal in right here. This is Mallory metal. They drilled it and they pressed a piece of heavy metal in here because when they balanced it the crank was too light. And set it straight down on the mains right there. We're going to rotate this around and make sure that we don't have any run out or any movement on that. Okay. So we don't have any movement there. This crank is, is running very true. And you can see they actually shaved some material off of some of these rods. This, this has been sanded here because they balanced this thing. Um, doesn't look like they really took much off of the big end of these. They're usually pretty close out of the box, but we want to get these down to within a half a gram. So now I'm ready to put the piston and rod assemblies in and take some measurements. Minus the 200 for the dish is eight thousandths. If we go to this end of the block, we got nine thousandths. That's only a one thousandths difference from end to end. That's really good. Our decks are flat and our deck height is the same from side to side and end to end. This is a really good deck on this block. So I don't. 
this is the kind of block that you hope for. <laughs> uh, this is a real sweet deal on this one. So he got a great deal on this block. At this point, what we want to do is we want to wash the block. Now, like 99% of the machine shops out there and a lot of the race teams are actually going to wash their block with soap and water. <laughs> Water displacing formula number 40. Put it on right away after you dry it, you don't want it to rust. Stay tuned because there's going to be more big block stroker awesomeness coming. Uh, it just didn't feel right. There was a little bit of a mismatch where the, uh, the cap met the parting line. So what I did is I pulled all that stuff back out and I called my buddy Chris over at Five Star and I said, hey man, I'm in a kind of a bind here. Um, I know you're busy, but can you align hone this block? So what we did is we took and we had, I had the block align honed. This was the cap that was the culprit. So we, we went ahead and, and had them align hone this. We wanted to tree this up and make it absolutely perfect. So that's Got a mic dead journal right there. We'll lock my mic in place. So what I've done is I've duplicated the size of this journal here. And what I have for oil clearance here is about two and a half to three thousandths. And that is exactly what we want. So I checked them all, they're all about two and a half to three thousandths, which is perfect. You want to take your cam and put a little dab of oil. You don't want to put this on totally dry bearings. So then we're just gonna very gently install that in and that cam fits really nice in there it turns by hand so take a measurement and make sure it's the same that way we, we don't have any problems when we put the cap on we'll go down a little more a generous amount of engine oil on each bearing never put this in dry look down on your mains and very gently just set that crank straight down in there just like so that you have sealer on that mating surface otherwise you will most certainly have a leak out the back of your engine here and also you don't want to touch the face of this bearing with your finger if you can help it the the acid in your finger could cause a spot the oil re is repelled from your crankshaft should turn real easy after that it turns turns nice and easy haven't torqued the cap yet we have about four and a half to five thousandths crankshaft end play it's actually right at five thousandths which is good that's that's what we're after so we've got everything torqued to 105 and it's turning really nice now what had happened before when I torqued this cap to the final torque 105 number four it had a tight place, it was binding, and then it, it was showing up, it was, it was pinching the bearing because there was an issue with that bore. But now that we've had it align, ho uh, align honed, um, the crank, it just turns really freely, no binding. It's just a really, really nice, nice uh, crank installation here. So. so the next step is to get one of the pistons in and degree the cam. All right guys, now so now I want to talk to you about the the, the rings. Um, there's a couple of different kinds of rings that you may have. Uh, there's just the standard gapped rings and then <clears throat> the rings that came with our engine here are what we call file to fit rings. Here, What you want is you want the ends of the rings completely square when they're butted up to each other. If you use a hand file sometimes you go to butt the ring up and you'll have a big gap on one side and it'll be tight over here. This is not a good thing to have happening. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to bring this ring up just like this and it's got these two pins on it here and the nice thing about it is is I can hold this ring against the pins and then square up against this wheel and then I, could, I go ahead and I file it. We cover that with with oil. You don't want anything going in dry here. Just going to very gently tap that into the bore. And we're very carefully going to put that connecting rod cap on. 
Alright, we are in business. So everything looks really good, feels really good on this, nice and smooth. No problems at all here. Got that's piston insulation. I am gonna go ahead, get the rest of these piston and rod assemblies together and assemble um, the other seven pistons into the engine. One of the most um, frustrating and misunderstood parts of the engine is the, the camshaft, the valve train, the cam timing. Because the camshaft is going to make one revolution to every two revolutions of the crankshaft because it's a four stroke cycle and only two of the strokes have a valve open. Is it's opening and closing the valves one degree or two or three or whatever. We need to verify that the cam that is in the box is actually the cam that this card says it is. That lobe pushes the lifter. My piston is heading towards the top dead center and my rod is swaying. We have a rocker arm ratio on rocker arm motors that multiplies the lift, which in turn, you know, it opens the valve a certain distance. While this piston is crossing over the center line and getting ready to head back down the other way, there's a certain number of degrees here so lift is basically how far your valve opens. It's called dwell time. So as this rod, and it's only a few degrees, is the distance that the lobe protrudes above the base circle. TDC, and I have a pointer right on zero. Crossing over, so I'm still sitting at top dead center. The reason that we care what it means is because it affects the way the motor runs. You know, six degrees of dwell time. I'm over this way six degrees. The bigger that duration is, the higher the RPM range power of the cam. And, and so it's important to understand that the, the duration has effect on your RPM power range. What happens a lot of times is I get, like I just had a guy the other day, he sent me a message and he says, hey, I have a, I have a, a, a K2500 or 1500, whatever, Chevy 4x4 with 35 inch tires. What cam should I put in it? It's a small block Chevy engine but I want it to have that choppy idle because I want it to sound cool. Well, here's the thing, you guys. You really don't want a cam like that in a big 4x4 with big tires or even a truck like this one because that type of a camshaft, when you start getting up to bigger duration cams and that idle starts getting rough, you're sacrificing low-end power and torque with that cam. And really, in a truck, if you're going to do off-roading or you got big oversized tires, uh, or you're pulling a trailer, you really want as much low-end torque as you can get. Now, as a general rule, big duration cams do not do well in big heavy vehicles. And we're going to watch our indicator until we come up off of the base circle, six thousandths. Gee, I got, you know, 28 degrees. We open the valve all the way till it's fully extended, and then we close it again. We know how we have about 300 thousandths of load lift here from six on opening to six at closing. You know, bigger is not always better. Where is this piston and rod assembly based on where the valve is? The valve is, is gonna open later than it should based on the power range of the cam. Lifter needs to be 106 degrees off of the center line. A smaller number, that means I'm advanced toward the center line. The cam and the crank are rotating and this indicator is not moving. That means that you are on the base circle of the cam. 50, 100, add our, uh, multiply our rocker ratio in there. The rocker ratio is like 1.7 to one. But I did the math and the, the lift came out to exactly 529, 300 times the rocker arm ratio. I'm gonna take the lifter down off of the lobe 50,000. If I take those two numbers and I add them together and divide them by two, 62 thousands. So remember that number. Uh, it's not thousands, I'm sorry, 62 degrees. So we know we have 62 degrees, we put that in our calculator. And we're gonna keep going and we're gonna go down the other side of the lobe and guess how far, you guessed it, 50 thousands. 153. What you have to do is you have to divide that number in two to actually get your intake lobe center line. So we're gonna say divided by two equals 107.5. That's a bigger number, so this cam is retarded one and a half degrees. So I need to advance this cam one and a half degrees. We're gonna go backwards, down past 50, and right back to it, divided by two, 106.5. Okay, now here's the dealio. If you are within 
a half a degree, your cam is considered straight up. And our timing is exactly where it needs to be on this cam. And that's really how you do you know, and you can see on this, I, I set these gears, and these are quality gears. These are comp cams gears on these things. This is not some cheap, you know, off-brand gear set. This is comp cams. And it was off by a thou and a half, a degree and a half. It, it was the, the, the marks weren't exactly right. So there's play, there's slop, there's differences in cams and crank flanges. These are castings or cut gears. The, the crankshaft, uh, you know, keyway can be off slightly one way or the other. The pin on the cam can be off slightly. There's so many variables here that you have to consider. So really, I mean, on most engines, if you really want to dial them in right on, I would say most engines that we do, we do have to make adjustments to get that number right where the cam card says it's supposed to be. Once in a while, you'll get one that's dead nuts on, but uh, that's, you, that's the exception. Hey, welcome back everybody. This is the next segment of the FE Stroker build. I know it's been a little bit, but I've been busy. Um, and I apologize to, the, to Michael Ryder, the engine's owner, because He's kind of waiting on this thing, and I've just been crazy busy. So, but now we're back at it. So after I torque them, I just take a paint marker and I make a little mark on all the bolts. I'll come back, I'll pull the bag off it, I'll see the paint marks, and I'll know, hey, I torqued it. Instead of going, God, I think I torqued it, but I'm not 100% sure. The thing is, with a motor, you got to be 100% sure. And you also, after you torque everything, you want to you want to rotate this and make sure that you don't have anything binding. This thing should be perfectly smooth all the way around and this one is it just turns really nice both of these rods have to have clearance from side to side and there's a spec for it as you take your feeler gauges and you go you just keep going up until you get the biggest one that won't fit in between there you always want to put a new oil pump on so we got our new oil pump on and this is our oil pump drive shaft and this just fits into the oil pump and the distributor comes down here and it's going to drive the pump well, here's my recommendation for this uh, factory 390 oil pump drive shaft. The best way to deal with this oil pump drive shaft is to take it um, once you get it apart and throw it in the trash because they're garbage. And it's I've seen multiple 390s over the years that actually twisted that thing in half and blew up the motor because the oil pump got locked up for some reason or whatever. Um, you always want to replace that with one of these. This is an ARP high performance oil pump intermediate drive shaft for that oil pump. It's made of chrome moly steel and it's hardened and it's very very strong. So the factory oil pump drive, get rid of it, get yourself an ARP. We're going to take a priming tool and prime the oiling pump, but you really don't want to put this pump on dry. We want to so with a drop of Loctite on, the gasket in there, and the 240 inch, <clears throat> inch pounds. Want to get some oil down in those <clears throat> gears. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna prime this pump. So we want to, you can feel it when that oil gets down there to the gears. You can also put some in this side. We put some uh, RTV, a thin layer of RTV silicone against the block between the gasket. And you also want to put some of that on the cover. You don't need a lot. I see guys use like half a tube on here. Be conservative with this. You just need a thin layer. And then we're just going to take and carefully slide the cover on. Find your keyway here. So there it is. And you want to very carefully just kind of tap that hub in. I don't really per like chrome pans per se because a lot of times they're just cheaply made. But this seems to be a pretty good one and this is actually the one that came with the engine. Although when we tore it down it was so dirty you couldn't tell but we cleaned it up and it looks to be in really good shape. The flanges aren't bent or anything. It's got the, the, uh, the lower dipstick tube is in really good shape. Although it is kind of raunchy looking around here. I think we're probably going to paint this blue just because it looks kind of cruddy. Um, but it's a good pan so rather than buying a new pan since this is a replacement pan we're going to go ahead and put it on. So we've made sure double and triple checked everything down below. 
got our gasket on, and then we're just going to take our pan, and we are going to set it straight down on there. We want to torque these to specifications, and we also want to torque them in the specific or the correct sequence, and that's kind of a big deal. I actually want to use the torque that Ford gave us, and it's 12 foot-pounds on these oil pan bolts. So you notice I'm going across here to the opposite bolt, and I'm starting toward the center of the pan, or in the center of the pan, and I just go till I get that inch-pound reading, and then I move to the next bolt on either side of that, and that's really all there is to it. Now it's probably a good idea to spray a little WD-40 back on that keyway and that hub. And then we just want to very gently tap it on. We don't want to beat on this thing. One of the problems with beating on a balancer is we're beating against the, uh, the thrust bearing in the motor. I've seen guys beat the heck out of the press-on balancers to put them on. That is the worst possible thing you can do. Get your bolts in here. Make sure you put your gasket on here with no sealer. And then, of course, we want to torque these to specifications. And that is basically it for the short block, folks. Um, now we're going to turn our attention to the cylinder heads and the upper part of the engine. Of course, there's other accessories and stuff that have to go on here. But uh, in the next video, I'm going to cut this one off there. By the time this video actually posts, I will most likely already have the heads and intake everything on this. Um, because the editing and stuff takes a while, so um, and I'm going to actively be working on this. I got to get this thing done for Michael Ryder. He's him and his son been waiting longer than they should have waited. They're very patient. Hey, folks. Well, thanks for watching the video, and uh, as usual, like, subscribe, all that stuff, um, share it, whatever. And we'll see you on the next one. Sorry, I'll try and make it not so long of a. Uh, delay between videos. Take care.